Hey guys, Dustin, Power Driven Diesel here. Today we're going to show you how to install some delivery valves in your P-Pump Cummins. So first things first, we need some basic tools. A couple regular old 10 mil socket, 11 mil socket. A torque wrench. If you don't happen to have a torque wrench, this is an important one you need on these. And a delivery valve socket. We have these on our website for sale. There's no way getting around this because this is a very high spline count special tool you have to have to get these opened up. You get your old ones out, put your new ones in. We got to get access to the delivery valves. And since we're going to be undoing the heater grid, I like to take the batter unhook the batteries. Very important because you don't want to play welder. I've already loosened these up, so they're just going to come off real easy. And then we're going to get started on the intake horn. Pretty important not to accidentally take these nuts off and drop them down your intake. Or you'll be having fun playing fishing with a magnet. Another important thing I should point out is that if you have any oil leaks and lots of dirt, you want to make sure you clean this real well. I blew this off with the air compressor. This engine gets washed every time it hits the car wash, so there's not really dirt, grime, oil leaks. But you do not want dirt in your injector lines and in your injectors down in your pump, that'd be a bad news. Just gotta remember it's all after your filter. So you wanna keep it as clean as possible. And there is gonna be little fuel come out of them because obviously they have fuel sitting in there. Then there's two more bolts down on the intake, holding down your injector lines. Now that we've got them all loosened up, should just pop right off. Now your injector lines are out of the way, we're to delivery valve socket time. All right, so now we're ready to crack open our delivery valves. We've got our fancy tool here. All the splines. We also got a big two foot breaker bar because these boys are tightened down to 80 foot pounds and then they paint over them. And if you've got 200,000 on your engine, they'll be kind of stuck. You want to make sure you get them down on there, especially if you haven't undone them before. And one smooth motion, you want to get them broke free. Let's make sure you don't drop your spring, your shim on the top there. Tip to the side as you pull it out. So now we're using our magnet to grab this delivery valve and piston out. And there we go. Notice as I pulled this one out, this is a 95, we've got the big land towards the bottom. And in the 94, 95 trucks, you'll have a shim that's down in here below the valve. Sometimes they're copper and sometimes they're aluminum. You want to take a pick and be very careful down in here since you can't use your magnet being aluminum. Try and snag this guy. And there's the shim. So when you pull these out, you make sure you do not use these with our delivery valves. And these are only in 94, 95 pumps. We have not seen them in years after that, 96 and up. So we're going to show you a few differences in the delivery valves because there are some variations through the years. Down here, we've got the one that we just pulled out of this truck stock. And you can see that there's a large land on the bottom. That was pointed down in the bottom. Obviously, bottom end goes down. Then in the 96 and up, they changed the way they machined them a little bit. So you've got a small groove on the bottom. Sometimes this confuses people. You want to make sure that when you get your new delivery valves from us, these are 025s. They're just like the older style. The large and goes towards the bottom. You do not want to take these out and flip these around and then install them. You'll have bad news. <laughs> do not do that. <laughs> Unfortunately, this has happened, but small end, stock, down. Big end, new valves, stay down. So we're gonna show you why I pulled these out at an angle. You don't want to lose these extra components in the valve holder. You got the spring, and a couple of shims in the top portion of this valve. 
And if you pull it out straight, then you got to work on getting all this out with your magnet, and they're very easy to drop and lose. So if you can maintain getting these out at an angle, it makes it a whole lot easier so you don't have to reorganize everything. So with your new delivery valves, we also give you brand new O-rings. Usually the old ones are pretty crispy. They're easy to roll off. Get a new one rolled on there. There you go. You also want to make sure you get some oil on there for when you're installing them. Anything will work. We use a light little bit of lube. When you're twisting them in, they'll not snag, slide right down in there. So now your holder is ready to go. And we're gonna go back to our new valves. Take our new O25. Remember, we're not putting the shim back in. We're just gonna go drop it down in place, right where the old one was. So we got our O25. This is what you call drop-in power. Boom, power. <laughs> no, on a serious note, this is where you wanna hold your finger on the spring, get her down here, and you can let it fall just right to where you're on top of your delivery valve. You want to make sure you're nice and centered. No binding. You've got our O-ring all oiled up. You should be able to just twist her right down in there until she stops. And then repeat on your other five delivery valves. So now that we've got all the delivery valves installed and the holders down finger tight, we're going to get to torquing them, which is a two-step process and we'll show you how to do this just so you don't rotate your barrels. You wanna get your delivery valve socket once again. First step is 25 foot-pounds. And me, personally, I go along and hit them all at 25 and then I'll come back and do our last step, which is 80 foot-pounds. So now that we've got our first step down, 25 foot-pounds, we're gonna to go to 80. So I set my torque wrench to 80 foot-pounds, and you do this in one smooth motion. You don't want to stop anywhere in between. Sometimes it'll grab the barrel, very, very rare, but it's just better to be safe than sorry. Just like that. Now since we're all torqued up, uh, we're back to getting your injector lines installed. Put your intake horn on, and don't forget your heater grid. As you can see, it's a fairly simple job. About anybody could do it in your garage. The only special tool you need is that one little socket. Hope you guys like the video, and if you have any questions, throw them down and hit that subscribe button. Come back next week.